You know, you can go top mounted with your red dot, which might make for a pretty simple transition, but you can also go a 45 degree offset with your red dot, which might make a pretty easy magnified to red dot transition. But let's talk about which one might be better for you. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about how four is none, but five is one. Because I've got five sighting solutions on my high-end build that you see right here that we're currently giving away with two other rifles as well, so don't miss out on that. And we'll talk more about that here in just a moment. But yes, you're probably wondering why, right? Well, the title of the video is all about offset RMR or offset red dot versus top mounted red dot. So yeah, I've got one optic, two optic, three optic, iron sights for my fourth sighting solution, and even the ACOG has an iron sight built in here. So that's, that's five sights. Can't go wrong with that. If one of them breaks, I got four to rely on, that's for sure. But anyway, yeah, it's kind of a lot. But that's only because the gun comes with the ACOG with the three sights and the iron sights. But I threw on my offset RMR here with the Arasaka or the T-Rex arms mount, and mainly because I really want to test this theory. A few people have asked, what do you, what do you prefer? And I think I prefer the 45 degree, I think. But we're gonna test that theory today, mainly because of this. If I go from magnified to red dot, I pretty much have to remove all contact with the rifle. Right now I've got a good side alignment, all contact with the rifle, okay? So at distance, I feel like that might hinder me some. But if I go from magnified rotate to red dot, I've actually got a tighter cheek weld and I am really on point with it and I feel very comfortable with it. In fact, I can turn it down a little bit so it's not so bright. So which one am I more efficient with? Well, let's figure it out. Now, before we even start shooting, there's a couple other things to take into consideration here. What about dropping your rifle? I don't drop my rifle much, but when I do, I expect that it might fall like this, or it might be my sling that breaks or something and it just goes muzzle into the dirt and that kind of sucks, right? Just you know, pull the trigger and send all the crap flying, it'll be fine. Don't actually, just make sure your barrel isn't obstructed with any debris before you pull the trigger. But anyway, if I drop my rifle on the side, that might damage the optic, but it might actually protect my primary optic, right? Which also makes me think, well, if it's top mounted to the primary optic and it drops straight down, it's my RMR taking a majority of that force and a majority of that hit and my primary optic maybe will be okay. It depends. Then again, we're also talking about Trigicon products here, which not sponsored by Trigicon, uh, they can take a beating, all right? So with all that being said, Ergonomics are kind of going to be a big deal here. What if I am need to go left-handed or go, you know, weak shoulder transition and start engaging closer up targets? Would I be able to do that with a top mounted? Easy, right? I can still go magnified top mount, but what about my 45 degree? Yeah, I can. It's not near as comfortable, but I can still do it if need be. So let's go ahead and just test a little bit here. Right now we are clear. Let's go ahead and load up a magazine and let's just try a couple of drills. Let's do, let's start magnified at the distant target, which is maybe about 70 yards from here and the close target about maybe 20, 25 yards. Easy enough. All right, so let's go magnified to offset right up top or top mounted and let's see how that goes. And well, let's time it. Let's see, straight on target here. 1.38, okay, let's try that again. One02 and let's try it one more time. Best out of three, 1.02 is my time to beat here. Just a little warm up, it's pretty fun anyway. 1.06, so 1.02 is my time to beat. Now let's see if I can just rotate the gun going from magnified to 45, and let's see if I can engage the target any quicker Let's just see, let's see how this goes. One point oh two. That was my first time with that one, so let's try it again. Point nine six, I'm feeling good with that. Let's try it one more time. 
1.10, so 0.96, just under a second for just rotating the rifle and going to my 45 degree. What I feel like is happening when I go from magnified to my top mount RMR is I'm kind of having to go from this close eye relief that the ACOG demands to right here and I'm like, okay, where is the dot? There it is. And then I need to make sure that I'm pretty much right on target. If I were to hold the gun, go from magnified to top and engage that same target, I think it would be rather easy. Too easy, in fact. So let's try going in the reverse. We know so far I'm favoring the offset, but let's try to go from red dot to magnified and let's see how we can do on that. So again, let's try top mounted and let's see how we go. I felt pretty good about that, 0.99 even. All right, cool. Let's try it again. Uh, I think I missed that first one. So 1.65, try it again. There we go, 0.95. All right, let's see if I can do any better with the offset, the 45 degree, let's try it. Yeah, I had to hunt for it a little bit more, 1.26. 1.27, all right, so fresh mag loaded up here. We should be all set, great. Now what I wanna try is actually test these red dots on here, the offset to the, well, you know, offset versus top mount. So I wanna do four shots fast as possible at, I wanna say about 60 yards or so here just to make sure that I can actually hit the target quickly with the red dots. And I have a feeling I'm going to prefer the offset, mainly because of that, the cheek weld, which I think is gonna help quite a bit, versus not having much of a cheek weld, but more of a chin weld for the top mount, which isn't as comfortable. Well, let's just see, four shots, fast as possible, four hits, fast as possible. Let's try it. Top mount. There we go, four hits, one miss, 2.83. Let's try it again. Oh my goodness, I tried to speed it up. Obviously did better with my first group. Now let's go with the offset and see if I do any better there. All right, let's give it a shot here. Not much better, 3.80. Let's try it one more time here. There we go. Slow it down some, you do good, 2.28. So yeah, I feel a little bit better with the RMR offset to the right. Now, as far as shooting comfortably, let's just try this here at distance shooting left-handed here. All right. All right, now let's try top. Yeah. <laughs> so I can definitely acquire the target quicker with the top mount if I'm shooting weak handed versus having to do you know, some weird stuff like that right there. But other than that, it's not too bad. So all in all, when I think about how effective I am with both of these, obviously I'm more comfortable if I'm strong arm with this guy, but I think having the top mount might be better if you are gonna be in those situations where you don't know if you might have to go weak hand. Is it doable? Absolutely. But this might actually be preferred for more of a uh, duty type of role. Competition, sure, but personally, I think I'm still gonna roll this on even uh, my Mark 12, I think, with the magnified optic and that on the offset. Again, just being able to roll the gun just feels a whole lot better to me. There we go. Cool. Quit throwing the gun on safe whenever you go for a reload. It's unnecessary. Anyway, that's a pretty fun video, I think, and I'd love to hear from you guys. What have you found to work best for you? Let me know down in the comment section which side do you prefer, obviously, ergonomically. Time-wise, in some areas, I prefer the offset, but overall, I think the uh, top mount might be a little bit more practical. But again, I wanna hear from you all down in the comment section below. Now, with all that being said, if you wanted the opportunity or want the opportunity to win this gun, 
minus this optic, but you still get everything else, head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries in for my high-end build that you see right here. There's a lot of stuff on this gun that it's coming with, and uh, we have it all listed out on the website. But long story short, it's a lot of expensive stuff that <laughs> makes for a super lightweight rifle and a whole lot of fun. Again, classicfirearms.com. Utilize the code word BUILDS because it's not just this one gun, it's plural. It's multiple builds that we're currently giving away. You can also win Alex gun, which is more of a budget option. And you can also win Matt's gun, which is the brand new, right out of the box, Stag. Well, it was brand new before he shot it. But it is a Stag Arms, and big shout out to Stag for sponsoring the whole AR build series that we recently concluded, and of course, sponsoring this giveaway. So thank you again, Stag Arms. And also a big shout out to Proof Research for providing this barrel, which I am enjoying a whole lot, and which one of you most likely will get to enjoy here soon once this giveaway comes to an end. So don't miss out on that. Again, classicfirearms.com is where you can get your entries, and also you can find all of your Second Amendment needs, wants, gifts, everything you could ever ask for pertaining to firearms, and you're right to firearm ownership and you know the right to keep and bear arms so head on out there go bear your arms and go to the range and actually exercise your second amendment right and get some training in like i obviously still need with some uh top mount rmr goodness all right okay i'll leave it off there guys as always we appreciate you and your business god bless and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com